All right, in this screencast, we're going to be looking at the early English colonies in the New World, specifically the colonies of Jamestown and Roanoke. Roanoke being the first colony, Jamestown following shortly after. Roanoke was originally started and funded by a man named Sir Walter Raleigh in 1585. The colony did not go well from the beginning. Native Americans cut off the supply routes. Um, whoever did survive that winter, many of them did starve or were killed by other Native Americans. Those that did survive returned to England in 1586, not even lasting a full year. They tried again in 1587. Long story short, everyone disappeared. Uh, John White had left the colony to go back to England, wasn't able to come back for quite some time, and when he returned, everyone was gone, including his daughter and granddaughter. All that was left of them was the word Croatoan, carved in a fence post, and the letter CRO, carved in a tree. Whatever happened to the lost colony and the people there, were they all killed? Were they captured? Did they leave on their own accord? We don't know. That's why to this day, the Rono colony is still a mystery. It took a number of years, but in 1601, England tried again. And this time they found something called the Jamestown colony on the James River, aptly named for, well, King James. After the first year of the colony, only 38 people survived. There were over 100 people that went, and after the first winter, only 38 were left. It looked like Jamestown was about to go the way of Roanoke. They were funded and run by a joint stock company, a group of investors, and they were about to lose their money, and everything was about to kind of go off. And that's where two of the more famous people from this era come in, John Smith and Pocahontas. I know a lot of you, when you think of these two, these are the faces that come to name. The Disney princess, Pocahontas, and the young, dashing, blonde hair, blue-eyed, chiseled chin, John Smith. But in reality, they did not look anything like this. John Smith, at this point, was in his mid-50s. He was the governor of the colony, and he saved the colony with the saying, he that will not work shall not eat. In other words, if you don't get off your lazy rear end and do some work, you're not going to get fed. He was also able to start a trade relationship with the Powhatan natives, in no small part thanks to, yes, Pocahontas. In 1609, he's injured in a gunpowder explosion and is sent back to England, which devastated Pocahontas. Now, in reality... Pocahontas and John Smith were never romantic. That just would have been weird, being that he was in his 40s or 50s. She was about 10 to 12 years old. That would have just been weird. This is one of the only known images of Pocahontas, and this was taken while she was in England. Because, yes, she was a Native American princess. She was the daughter of the Powhatan chief. And she eventually does marry an Englishman, a tobacco farmer by the name of John Rolfe in 1614. At this point, she was about 18, 19 years old. She goes with John, John Rolfe to England, spends some time there, and meets the king. This is where this portrait was taken of her, because she's clearly not dressed in Native American clothing. When she leaves, she gets very sick. There's, they're on their way back to the New World. She gets very, very sick. They turn around and head back for England, but it's too late. She died of smallpox at the age of 22. Even after her death, she continued to have an impact on the relationship between the Jamestown settlers and the Powhatans. Jamestown continued to grow, continued to thrive. Powhatans even taught the settlers how to farm, fish, hunt. Things were going well. But... After a while, without Pocahontas there, relationships were strained again. And in 1622, the English kept on taking over more land. And that was the essential problem between Europeans and Native Americans, was the use of land. 
1622, like I said, Powhatans attacked the settlement, killing hundreds of settlers, which really sparked off a lot of rebellions. The most famous one being Bacon's Rebellion. No, not that Bacon. Nathaniel Bacon. In 1676, Nathaniel Bacon and other farmers wanted the governor to seize more land from the Native Americans because they wanted it for their tobacco plantations. Governor Berkeley refused. He's like, he was saying to them, there's been too much fighting as it is, and now you want me to go and take more land from them? He refused, absolutely. Bacon and the other farmers were, inf were infuriated. They're furious. They marched into Jamestown, took over the House of Burgesses, which was, to this day, Virginia's and America's first full representative government. Huge controversy, and essentially it really strained and tested our representative type of government. Government resumed, Bacon and the other farmers relented, but damage was done with the Native American relationships. We weren't nearly as bad as the Spanish, I mean, we, sorry, I mean the British. British relationships weren't nearly as bad as the Spanish, but they weren't great. They constantly fought over land and use of the land. Native American belief was that we all own land and it belongs to all of us and we all share it. Whereas the English had the opinion of, this is my land, private property, trespassers will be shot. That is the British and European view of land. Whereas the Native Americans, it belonged to all of us. We can share. I hope you all paid attention to this. We're going to continue on with the other 13 colonies coming up. But this is going to be very useful for your Jamestown DBQ packet.